We've got some good news to share tonight. Late last night, the Black and Missing Foundation learned that 14-year-old Leah Plesko has been found safe. She was reported missing from Orlando back in June. We talked about her case on our Black and Missing segment just last week. We want to be able to bring you more good news on cases like Leah's, but unfortunately, the attention missing persons cases get can dwindle over time, especially when the missing face is black or brown. One case we recently featured on our weekly series is troubling as each day passes. Dashina Kyle vanished back in June, just days before her 27th birthday. When family members went to check on her at her home in Knoxville, Tennessee, they found the dog, who they say Dashina treated like her own child, left alone and no sign of Dashina. Just hours ago, Knoxville police told us that this investigation remains very active and they need more attention and tips. If you know anything, please call East Tennessee Valley Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-8477. Meanwhile, in Michigan, a mother of four is still missing after heading out to run errands days before Christmas. Jennifer Blackman borrowed her daughter's car to run an errand back on December 22nd, and she hasn't been seen since. Jennifer is 35 years old from River Rouge, Michigan, a suburb of Detroit. If you know anything about her case, please call 313-842-8700. These next few days and weeks will be especially trying and important for another family. They're hoping this little girl's birthday doesn't come and go again without her safely at home. September 6th will mark Ariana Fitz's eighth birthday. She hasn't been seen since April 2016. Her mother, Nicole, was found dead in a park in San Francisco, but Ariana's family has held out hope that someone took Ariana and that she's still alive. Ariana's aunt, Contessa Fitz, joined me recently along with Natalie Wilson from the Black and Missing Foundation to talk about what was going on in Nicole's life at the time of the tragedy and why she believes Ariana is still out there. At the time that uh, both Nikki and Ariana went missing, uh, Nikki was working um, at the, uh, the Best Buy in San Francisco and Nikki, um, her main focus was work and for her kids was work for working uh, to take care of her children. She, um, she found people who she believed she could trust to uh, care for Ariana while she was working. Uh, Nikki's devotion was, um, was, like I said, was, was working and um, unfortunately, the people who she thought she could trust to mm-hmm. to look after Ariana uh, turned out to not not to be the case. And Nikki had never had hadn't seen her daughter again. And um, there was a struggle for her to get her to get Ariana back. And the end to that struggle ended up in Nikki's murder. Wow. Um, I'm so sorry, Tess. You know, a lot of times we find family members, you know, have a good sense of what might have happened when their loved ones go missing. What do you think happened to Ariana? I think that, I think that someone wanted Ariana. Someone either met this kid and fell in love with her because it was easy to do. Ariana is just the sweetest kid, the most bubbly, yeah. sweetest kid. And I think that someone, someone wanted her. Someone, um, like I said, either someone met her or someone, or someone just out there just wanted to have a kid of their own. And um, I believe that the people who looked after Ariana provided gave this gave Ariana to to someone um, I believe that that they know the whereabouts of Ariana and and I, would, I do believe that Ariana is alive and is out there and I do believe that she is being taken care of but that still is not okay um, Ariana still needs to be at home. 
It's very devastating and heartbreaking. Uh, Ariana was two and a half years old when she went missing, and she is going to be eight this year. It's been five years, Mm -hmm. and it's just... It's so incredibly heartbreaking to know that, to not be able to see Ariana growing up. Now, we want to show our viewers what Ariana would look like through an age progression sketch. Now, you say Ariana would be eight right now, right? So while we take a good look at this, tell us a a little bit about your niece. Even, Even at two, I understand she had a big personality. She did. Um, she is, um, my, the best way I can describe Ariana is, is just bubbly. Um, she, um, she would just get people's attention. She has a great smile, great energy, uh, strangers, people who she didn't even know when we would be out with her in public, she would wave to people and people would respond to that and they would wave back to her and she just, um, I just remember her being so curious about so many things and um, just uh, uh, her, I remember one of the biggest things for her that would um, get her attention or get her excited was just big, bright and bold colors. And I remember uh, watching cartoons with her and and, uh, how much she would enjoy that. And like I said, she just has this this energetic and and, uh, very, bubbly and uh, personality. Hey, Tess, I'm being told that we, we've got a, a limited amount of time. I just wanted uh, to ask you, we, we talked to the police um, and one of the detectives said that, you know, this broad, this broadcast, like BNC right now, making the case, really does help close cases. What do you want our viewers to know most tonight as, as we all try to help in the search for Ariana? Uh, I want everyone to know that first, my sister Nikki did not deserve what happened to her. And the way that we can help Nikki is to bring Ariana home. Um, we, all of, all of us who love and know Nikki, we want Ariana home. So we just want everyone to know that if anyone sees her, knows anything, anyone who they may think is her, who looks like her, is any tip or anything, Um, to please just contact authorities. There's a $100,000 reward being offered by SFPD. There's a $10,000 reward being offered by Best Buy where Nikki worked. Um, Tips can be anonymous. Um, You can contact the SFPD. You can contact the Black and Missing. Um, You can, uh, anything that you know, um, like I said, can be anonymous. We just really want Ariana home. That's my plea is to Please help us bring Ariana home. Uh, Natalie, we've been doing these stories with your organization, uh, the Black and Missing Foundation, and um, for weeks now. And this sounds more hopeful of a case because when we talked to the police today, they said that they were following aggressively new leads and that some of those leads had led them to Las Vegas. Um, so. Talk to us and our our viewers about how it's important to bring awareness to missing black women and girls' cases. Absolutely. Um, We believe that someone knows something. And for the past five years, we have been searching for Ariana. And all it takes is one person with um, some type of information to come forward that could provide closure for the family or at least answers. And media coverage, and we're so thankful to the Black News um, Channel, because it's media coverage like this that makes the community aware that someone is missing. And it also puts pressure on law enforcement to add additional resources to the case or the cases and take them seriously. But again, you know, this family has been devastated by tragedy twice, which is the loss of Nicole, Ariana's mother, and you know just trying to find ariana here's one more look at ariana fitz again this little girl went missing in 2016 her eighth birthday is september 6th today san francisco police told us that there are no new updates in the case but they are hoping for the best so if you have any information about ariana please call san francisco police at 415 
575-4444. We'll be right back.